Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do my first review video for the books that I've been reading for nonfiction November 2016. Today I'd like to talk to you about the two books I read for the controversial category, the first being You Don't Have to Like Me, Essays on Growing Up, Speaking Out, and Finding Feminism by Alida Nugent, and the second being I Don't, A Contrarian History of Marriage by Susan Squire. Given that I read both of these books for the controversial challenge, I think it goes without saying that I may say some things in this video that you may not agree with, but the whole point of this challenge was to stimulate good, respectful, productive discussion. So let's start off with talking about You Don't Have to Like Me. These are, as the title suggests, personal essays written by Alida Nugent on her experience being a woman. In one of her essays, she talks about feminism itself, how she found feminism, how it has enhanced her life, and how people react to her when they find out she is a feminist. Unfortunately, sometimes when you tell people that you are a feminist, they view it as some sort of confrontation, as if you are out to get something of theirs because you believe in equality. They also make assumptions like you're an angry person or you hate men. I, of course, consider myself a feminist. I don't know why any woman wouldn't, considering that feminism is just about equality between the sexes. It has come as a surprise to me as I become more educated and have entered adulthood that there is ever a question of whether or not men and women should be equal. I find it very surprising and very upsetting that just because you say something like, I believe that men and women should be equal. I believe that women deserve equal pay. I do not believe that women should have to worry about harassment when they leave their homes. That that is some sort of charged political statement that people will read into and make assumptions about who you are based off of that. For me, it has never been about fighting the man or trying to stick it to men in general. It's just about making the world more equal. So in that way, I found myself really understanding Alita Nugent's point of view. She also talks about how it's hard to be a woman, whether it is the threat of sexual assault or the access to birth control or just kind of the structures in place that make it difficult to be female in this world sometimes. Talks about being friends with other women and how that's sometimes hard because of the way we're kind of brought up to be competitive with one another. And there's really no reason why we should need to be. It also talks a lot about the experience of getting older and coming to terms with who you are and how you look. I certainly have experienced that. I think every woman experiences that. I really did enjoy reading this book and it did bring a lot of things to mind that I've continued to think about. It also brought up a lot of things that I already was thinking about on a regular basis. It was nice to read essays from a woman who is about the same age as me instead of like early 20s. There's nothing wrong with being in your early 20s, but when you start to go through your 20s, you find that you're experiencing different things at the tail end of them than you were at the beginning of them. So it was nice to see some of those things reflected. I am not sure, however, that personal essays are going to be something that I'm going to continue to read. My experience of reading nonfiction is more reading about things objectively, not from firsthand experience. I barely read any memoir and I've never read a personal essay collection. And I have to say it felt a little bit too personal. It felt like I was being nosy or invasive. I don't know if that's something that would go away over time, but I did find it a little jarring. The second book that I read that I would like to talk to you about is I Don't. It was very fitting that I picked this book up right after I finished You Don't Have to Like Me, and it was very fitting that I ended up picking both of these books for the controversial challenge because both of them touch on feminist themes. This is a brief, not very long, history of the institution of marriage beginning in ancient Israel and the accounts of marriage in the Bible up until the Reformation and Martin Luther's marriage. It is focused pretty exclusively on the Western worlds, which ended up being a flaw of the book overall. It was very limited in scope, and also the book was hindered by its lack of focus going through. But other than that, I found this book very enjoyable. The tone is very snarky and sarcastic. There is swearing that happens in here, which was hilarious. In our modern world, it is easy to forget that marriage has ever meant something different than a loving relationship between two people who've decided to spend their lives together. That may be what marriage means now, but it is not what marriage has always meant throughout the centuries. First and foremost, as the biblical accounts will confirm, marriage was 
all about reproduction. Marriage has also been largely under the thumb of the church throughout the centuries. Church has had its say in what marriages should look like, what the relationship between husbands and wives should be, how children should be created, what the sexual relationship between the husband and wife should be, on what days they should have sex. Later on down the line, marriage became a means of acquiring land, titles, status, alliances, connections. Its connection to love is a relatively modern concept. There are definitely feminist aspects of this book, like I said, in that it shows just how clearly marriage was a means of ownership over a woman and a means of controlling women. In many of these ancient cultures, marriage literally meant man's ownership of women. Women are either shown as inept, the weaker sex, unable to take care of themselves, or cunning and devious. Women have had reputations as temptresses since Eve in the Garden of Eden, even though in the beginning of this book, Susan Squire provides biblical evidence that there was no coercion that took place between Eve and Adam. She never forced him to take the apple. There were no honeyed words. There were no threats. She just handed it to him. And yet women are still given the bad name. This book highlighted for me the issue I've always had with the term traditional marriage or traditional family because there is no such thing. Like I said before, this book highlights just how much marriage has meant different things to different people since its existence. Obviously for us in the modern day, marriage means something very different. I am currently married. The history of marriage does not affect the way that I see my marriage because legally marriage is different now, which means a whole world of difference. And emotionally, marriage means something different now. But it does bother me when people want to call marriage as we know it now traditional, as if there's any kind of long-standing history of the way we live as married people now. It is 110% different than anything that has preceded it. But again, this is why I read this book for the controversial challenge. <laughs> so those were the two books that I read for the controversial challenge. I enjoyed them both. I'm feeling in this moment like I should be wearing a crash helmet for all of the dislikes and coming. But hey, you can always trust my channel to bring something different. As I said, the purpose of this challenge is to stimulate conversation. So that is absolutely what I would love to do with you down in the comment section below, as long as it is respectful. If you have any comments or questions for me in general, you can put that in the comments below, or you can reach me a variety of different places in social media and the links to all of my profiles are in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope all of your nonfiction picks are treating you great this month. Happy reading and I will see you in the next video. Bye.